Hello everybody, how are you? I am here with uh, none other than our very famous Cthulhu. Uh, or, well, we can't say Cthulhu, it has to be Kitty Cthulhu because unfortunately Cthulhu is trademarked. I've, I learned that this week. So, it's basically her and her miserable tail, so we're just going to call her Kitty Cthulhu. And she's got to be in every single video, it seems. Huh. If I tape out here, it's I'm going to get into it. But anyways, welcome to the weekly vlog, vlog, whatever you want to call it. It's where I sit down and I talk about a bunch of stuff, which usually is imitated or copied anyway. So, so if you want to watch it, watch it. If not, that's fine too. Um, the first thing I wanted to talk about was... Um, some of the things that have gone on this week that kind of opened my eyes to some of the things that I said last week. Um, I think the biggest thing is how embarrassed I feel, how foolish I feel, how how utterly disgusted with myself I feel for even talking about Kickstarters and patrons and all those other kind of things. I'm just waiting for her to take a bite at me. I'm sorry, I'll keep going though. Um, and all those other type of things that I wanted to raise money for the channel when there are just so many more important things. And that was really brought to light to me. A lot of you were very kind and said that, you know, no matter what I do, you would support it and help the channel running. And, you know, here I am looking for cameras and sound when so many people are just missing so many other things and I think it was just totally ill placed of me and there's a reason for me saying this um, I received some letters this week uh, and a couple packages that came in um, first of all one from Jim who wanted me to forward something uh, to um, Mr. Jenkins and his poor wife who is under uh, um, in stage four breast cancer he sent a package and he sent her something but um, the thing that really got me was that uh, he sent something for everybody in the house here and uh, uh, I want to let you know Jim because Jim asked me not to use his last name um, that um, uh, we're, my wife said that she was very thankful for it he had sent some prayer bears and it meant a real lot to her and and the kids were just absolutely thrilled and just amazed that somebody would, you know, just acknowledge what they do and and just be so kind to even send them something. And you know, here I was asking for something, and and this guy sent a bunch of stuff for me to forward on, which I didn't look into, um, but I forwarded it on to uh, Mr. Jenkins and his wife, who is on Monday going for another checkup and they're holding their breath and it just made me think about different things um, you know here I am looking for a few things to just do something I like to do when I should be doing what I've always done and that's make a difference and try to help the people around us and um, you know I think sometimes I I get tired I get worn out and um, I lose focus a little bit and I think it's just normal I'm a human being I make mistakes and you know I think it'd just be foolish when we could do so much good that number to my right here in that right hand corner if you're looking at me on your left you know of subscribers that's that's not the count of my brain cells or intelligence that's the number of people that are part of this channel and what was shown to me this week is that I'm nothing on this channel I really am this channel is basically you guys you're the ones that drive it you're the ones that create it you're the ones that ask for certain things all I am is a conduit you're the one that you're the ones that help people when I tell you a story of something um, you know, and, and you know, I just go on. You know, when Alan sent things that were very meaningful, um, 
Christopher sending all that Merc stuff. He sent a ton of Merc stuff. So now I can take my Merc stuff, paint it, and and do something, raise some money for for Make a Wish. People that send things and you know the Pete's and everything, which I've got a ton of stuff to send out to Pete because you know his kindness and we were able to raise so much money. I painted a couple sets of stuff for him, so so you know just to kind of pay him back. Joe, who's been so kind with all quiet on the Martian front, who who's sending some stuff this week, which I have to return his email. I, I like I said, um, I return emails on Mondays. I never do it on the weekend because I try to stay away from the computer on the weekend as much as I can, except when we're doing this or doing some live playthroughs. Uh, I usually try to get all the stuff I need to get done and prep work to get ready for the you know the the week and the next weekend. So we're always constantly trying to paint things, learn things, and and basically entertain you guys and and show you things and and try to make the channel better uh, so we can do more, so we can help more. But I realized that this channel is really nothing without you guys um, all we do is play games and we chat with you the way we even do games uh, you know kinda takes away from us going hey look at this brand new game we got it's more hey watch us make all these mistakes playing this game so your groups don't have to and then you know the games are basically run by you guys because some of you guys have played a certain game three or four times or you might be a designer of the game or something that pops in and helps us get through it so we learn the game you know we don't do things all polished we don't spit shine things we don't sit there and and make it you know uh, use our wives as tools or or children as tools you know, we sit there, we play a game. It's as simple. It's just me and my family, and we play a game. You know, we don't try to make stars on anybody. We don't care about that. What we try to do is build a community and make people aware of people that hurt. Try to teach people something to open their eyes to painting. And to teach people how not to ruin, you know, on certain games you know how the first time's going to be it's going to be bumpy and we try to take that out for you so you go when you sit there and you get stuck you go I remember that I remember Rob and Janice and Justin had that problem right there and this is the way that they figured it out and that way it doesn't slow your experience down when you get with your gaming groups that's about all this channel is and you know we try to raise some money I mean we have a lot of toys and we like to play them we like to include you guys. Um, you know, I think it stems back to a lot of things. When I, I started doing this, I started thinking about what I wanted to accomplish. And I think I just wanted to play games online. And I wanted to make some kind of history that I could always go back and look at. From that Death Star, and it seems like I rehashed a lot of this stuff, but... It's all leading into a few things, and I think this is more for the newer people that have come in. You know that. Um, you know, I started this with with the Death Star, and I just started documenting things, and I wanted to just have it because I'm just getting to an age where you know I'm pretty old, and you know you want to have things that you can look back on when while the kids are still here. You know, they're not going to be here forever. And I'll pro pretty much be on my own by myself. This will probably just turn into just a painting channel and a solo play channel. It'll evolve, but it's not going to go anywhere. It's always going to be here, and there's always going to be something. And everybody that's a part of it is the main part of it. I am not the main part of it. You're the one that drives a lot of these games and helps us get through these playthroughs. You guys are the ones that, that help with painting tips and things like that to help me become a better painter. I'm not a great painter. I like to show people how to do certain things. I, I, I enjoy it. I like having you guys over my shoulder when I'm painting. For me, it's a comfort. It's 
it's having like having friends there and and I enjoy that aspect of, of doing that when live playthroughs every time we play a game we turn on the camera so you guys are included and some of you are there for every single one and I don't know how but we're very blessed we're very blessed by each and every one of you so for me to say hey I want new cameras and I want new sound I, I, I'm, I'm appalled with myself you know I always said something um, quite a while ago and uh, I think I left my glasses in the house so I'm gonna do the best to read a few things but um, this week with uh, some of the letters I got like I said you know the one from Jim which uh, and Alan all the things that didn't and Chris who sent all that stuff Mark um, Ray that sent things uh, you know, P and I, you know, there's so many of you that have done so many great things, and um, it opened my eyes to a lot of things. And I always wanted to acknowledge people because, um, for some of you new guys, the reason I really, really, really try to make sure that I acknowledge every single one of you was actually because of this very comic book here. Yes, this very comic book. This is the original book I got back in 19, I think it was 76, in June, 76 or 77, I forgot, it's a long time ago, I mean it's pretty much 40 years. It was the first um, superhero I really, really cared about. My father had came home with a big, huge box of comics earlier when I was 10, and uh, I was having problems reading. And they thought I was stupid. Which maybe I am stupid. I wasn't comprehending things or anything like that. And um, I got this big, huge box of comics. And I remember that Thor 222 was in there. And I read it and I was like, oh my god, this is like the greatest thing ever. And um, never found out what the story was until I finally went to a comic book shop like 10 years later and found, got 223. But, um,. I um I basically read this book over and over and all the comic books over and over and found out that I did know how to read. I just was bored with the subjects that they were giving me. I needed things like heroes and things like that. Things that faced impossible odds because I wanted to be a lot like my father who was a cop and was always doing brave things. And that's what I saw as heroes and I wanted to be one more than anything in my life and um, this book meant the world to me I've had this book this exact book for forever well I finally went to a comic book show where Marv Wolfman the guy who drew this comic book was and I was so anxious to tell him my story and how much this one book meant to me and how you know this guy was everything to me and I got there and I told my story and he brushed me off and basically was like yeah well I made the book for kids and then he signed the very front of it and went basically next now I understood that who's gonna care about a story from some some 30 year old guy at the time you know who's gonna care about that story what was it gonna mean to to somebody that's probably heard that story a million times but that always stuck with me was just I just said I don't think I could do that somebody just opened them their heart up to them to, to myself and how can I do that and all of you whether you've come to Gen Con or anywhere else you've always seen me someplace and I've listened to your stories and for me it's very humbling because now I'm on the other side a little bit and when you're telling me your stories and how you paint with your children and how I affected your lives for me that is everything to me uh, you know I I can care less about other channels I can care less about how many million subscribers and how much money they're making this little channel here this itty bitty channel affected somebody's life and that means something to me
it means a lot to me which will lead me into the next thing um, is how I affect people I received a letter from a, a gentleman named Mark and he sent me a picture of his two children painting and that I had an effect on that and that they listened to me while I paint and for me I was moved by that and like I said I return every single email I, I write everybody back I think one or two have gotten through the cracks and somebody had said oh god you know you never and then I went back answered that email and their email and apologized for about three paragraphs on you know every once in a while you do it kind of it's kind of hard to keep up with and if you ever have to email me I make myself very accessible at Nova Prime 860 at hotmail.com send me whatever you like pictures of what you paint your thoughts things that you're suffering with or you just want to talk I'm here but this man sent me something and um, I wrote back and I, I wrote back something specific and uh, it was very specific in the fact that the way I I answered it I, I caught myself because I wrote back and I said, wow, I, you know, this means so much to me. And I go, and at times when I feel like not doing this anymore at times, when I see other people steal my segments, try to copy things that I do, or, or send me hate mail or whatever it is, or have their friends, like they think I don't know, uh, put stup stupid comments in. Um, from other channels and it gets me down a bit and I go well, you know why am I doing this you know I it, why am I trying to do this to someday try to do this when I retire for a living it's just sometimes too much stressful or when you're piled with a ton of games that you want to learn which isn't a problem or, or, or anything because I do it anyways but I mean um, you know, sometimes it, it, it can get, you want to do the best you can for you guys. For you guys. Not for myself, not for popularity, but for you guys. Because you guys believe in this channel. So now, I think I put a lot of pressure on myself to believe myself. But I had written back and I said, you know, when I get a letter like this, it's moments like this, I have the strength to go on. And I said, where is that from? I took that from somewhere. And then it dawned on me, it was this very comic. Next Men, number 14. Now, you're probably saying, okay, well, usually having the strength to go on can deal with about 900 different comic books. This one's a little different. You see, there was a young guy that wrote into this comic book. And uh, he lived up in Connecticut, and he was 20-something years old. It just happened to be me. So I'm going to read this to you the best I can, because I don't have my glasses with me. I wish I did. As a matter of fact, I'm going to take the magnifying glass over here. Watch out, Cthulhu kitty. Yeah, I had that coming. <laughs> I'm actually going to take this magnifying glass so I can see it. So forgive me. I will do the best I can to read this. Ah, oh god, I can't see it. So I wrote, For 20 years, I have been reading and collecting comic books. In those years, the most valued part of my collections have been your works. Now, I wrote this to John Byrne. John Byrne, to me, is probably one of the greatest writers and artists of all time. He ranked up there with George Perez for me, and... Uh, the King Kirby uh, and, Steve and Stanley. Those works are some of the most precious things I have. Walt Simonson's another one. But anyways, this guy I idolized. You know, and um, it's a funny thing. that It's two parallel stories. You have the Marv Wolfman story and then you have this story. So let me finish while this tale kind of just whips around. In those years, the most valued part of my collection has have been your works. Throughout the years, I have been very moved by your work. Not long ago, you were doing a five-store signing at a local dealer. I happened to be in one of those stores and was hoping to have you sign the last Galactus story, which appeared 
in the now dead epic mag I had the last page because the story was never finished I had him sign the watchers page because it was just like an epic ending uh, and it was leading into this huge thing and you never found out another thing and by the way thank you for telling me how it ends which he did which was cool as I was waiting I got to talk to some of the younger kids that collected comics now I just couldn't not understand how some of them think some didn't even know who you were others said that they were they just wanted their copies of John Burns next men number one signed so that it may be worth something someday I asked one kid why do you collect comics because they're going to make me rich he replied that was pretty much the feeling for most of the people at the signing what happened to the days when people cared about what was inside those foil holographic die cut covers it seems all they cared about is who was going to draw it instead of who writes it sure the art is important and the artist help gets the story across but they forget that a story can touch the heart as well as the soul that some will live forever in your mind and can be never be taken away and I think that's why I've always admired your work and your fantastic talent you are the best writer artist I have ever seen and your works on JBMN John Burns next man is some of your finest may God bless you and keep you drawing and writing for many years to come that was the letter I wrote to him and here's what was replied pause as John waits for his glasses to defog you know there are days when I sit at my drawing board and I wonder why I'm do why I'm doing what I do sure I love it and I turn the page there we go probably be writing and drawing com comics somewhere on the back of envelopes say if the industry imploded and I found myself shackled to the desk to a desk in a dreary office job but when I look at the state of the marketplace today I really wonder if the effort I put into the pages is really worth it in the long run. Recently, for instance, I did a signing at a local comic shop where I overheard an exchange between what appeared to be a younger brother and sister. The boy had just snapped up the latest Marvel trading cards and crossed in front of my table to get to the cash register. Passed in front of the rack full of Marvel titles, the sister who appeared to be about 10 and therefore a couple of years older than the boy noticed these and registered that these were the same characters as on the cards her brother was buying she pointed this out asked him if he wanted to pick up some of these titles he replied no he said and this is where and this is a word for word quote I don't want to get started on the comics ah but then I get a letter like yours Robert and I have the strength to go on <clears throat> the way he replied to that and of course I was thrilled oh my god somebody replied to a letter I wrote which I actually handwrit had to put a stamp on it and go to a mailbox and put it I mean that's how long ago this was and uh, there was no email and uh, and then, you know, I, I, I always wondered, and I said, well, you know, how could he be so, he's like one of the most talented guys in the world, how can he be so beaten down by this industry? I mean, I know things are tough, but this guy can just change it by writing things and doing things because he's the greatest. I never understood it or understood that letter until recently. And when I reread it, I understood it. I got it. That that you know no matter what happens your love for things have to be there and you get your strength from the people that are around you not because you're on YouTube or you're on Instagram and you're popular on this or that the strength comes from you guys the strength comes from the people around you the people that that make this channel what it is if this channel had 10 subscribers, would it, would it be as powerful as it is now? No, because there's more people involved in helping. 
but it still would be 10 very important people. Now we're up over 3,000 people. The number doesn't matter. It's the quality of people. It's you guys that drive it. You are the ones that no matter what I do, it matters. It matters because you are what drives and keeps things going. And I wanted to share that with you, two different variances. You know, when I met him, he was very, very kind to me. And meeting John Byrne was a big thing. Where on another level, meeting Marv Wolfman was a great disappointment. Um, but I took those things and I learned from them. And I find myself, I found myself actually stealing from that letter and not even realizing it um, consciously and doing it subconsciously. And when I... It, it dawned on me this week, I pulled out that copy and I said, I, I, I think that's where it came from. And, um, and for me, all the things that you guys have done is beyond words. Beyond words. What we've done in the last year in helping Make-A-Wish, helping the Jack Vassal Memorial uh, Foundation, I do have the strength to go on. I have the strength to go on for quite some time to do things beyond what we've done, to go beyond things, to make a difference. If you hurt, write me. I'll help. If you want to help somebody, I'll point you in the right direction. You are the many wires and I am just the transformer. I will point your, your voltage, no matter how strong or how weak, in the right direction to get you to where you need to go. So we can all reach a common goal, and that's powering each and each other's lives. Because you guys are as much of power to me as I am maybe to you, or to others, or, or how you guys are to others. We all help each other. <clears throat> With that said, um, a very dear friend of mine, uh, um, I got a note from Sam yesterday, and he asked for a whole bunch of prayers for Eric Finley, who is really suffering right now. Um, he had to be rushed to the hospital. He was the one that got us the scythe and he just all he wanted to do was play a game with Sam and Z. And he was very nice and allowed me to play with him and uh, he said it was one of the best experiences of his life and, uh, and um, unfortunately he was rushed to the hospital yesterday so I am if, if some of these um, some of these playthroughs seemed a little a little off center this week there's been a lot of people that are hurting right now and uh, and it does take a toll and it's kind of hard to turn on a camera and turn it off because I don't turn off my emotions I am who I am so for Eric for um, for, for Trevor's wife and, 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 and so many others that are suffering right now that uh, that need our help um, I just want you to know that uh, I'm doing everything in my power to help you guys um, and to do what I can. A bunch of painted minis don't mean anything, you know, they're nothing compared to the insurmountable courage and odds that you guys have to go through, but I will do whatever I can to help. Hawk whatever I can, sell whatever I can, do whatever I can to raise the money to make your lives easier because my life's pretty good. All I do is turn on a camera and play games. So that's kind of my, my big preach this week, and I told you it was going to be a bit long, so I apologize. Um, I hope everybody liked all the work that we did on the others this week. Um, we painted up the others, uh, Masmora and uh, Mercs. We're going to see if we can fit Mercs in today. Um, we got a few things going on. Like I said, I put things up there, but I tried to get as much of it as I can, but uh, we do the best we can. We are planning on doing um, Mansions of Madness next week. So we're going to be painting that live. I think we're going to just be painting that game live and maybe a couple other things. I am going to be finally getting some battle tech ready. Um, uh, Iron Wind Metals, who are the now official people that do uh, battle tech minis. Um, I'm going to be taking a look at some of their stuff. We took a look at last, uh, last, uh, the last front um, last week, the car, World War II card game. Great game. I actually enjoyed it, and the kids are, are going to play it. 
um, Memorial Day weekend, we're going to be playing a ton of games. Now for a pretty big announcement. Um, it looks like I might be going to BGG Con uh, in November. Um, I am talking with Tom about it, and we are going to try to make an arrangement to get me to go to that con. So um, we'll see how it all works out. And uh, but it'll be nice to see everybody at BGG Con. Um, sorry, I waited till the very end, even though it's in the title here. Um, I think that covers just about everything. Uh, we've got a lot going on. Your comments, what you want to see, what you don't want to see. Um, we're going to be doing some fundraisers for Make-A-Wish and stuff like that. Uh, I'm just going to find the right things. We're going to be doing some raffles. We're going to be some, doing some raffle drawings. And I think I figured out how to do that. Um, uh, I think what we're going to do, it's going to be a dollar a raffle. And uh, what I'm going to do is paint up a game. And that's how we're going to give away uh, going forward uh, games for um, Make-A-Wish. Um, so, um, that's how we're going to do the, net, the once a week, uh, drawings. Um, after we do recon, I think the first one that we'll do is recon. So all your names, the box of goodness, all the names will be cleared out. We're going to redo the box of goodness and we're going to start that up for the second year and we're going to raise money for the Make-A-Wish Foundation as well as all the other charities and we're going to do everything that we can to help people. So that little button on the left hand side isn't going to be for raising money for cameras or or things like that. Uh, when I finally get some get get things kind of under control um, we're going to start raising money and uh, anything that Pete uh, gives us um, what we're going to do is we'll turn on the button we'll put it under the thing so you understand what you're doing and uh, you buy a ticket and uh, your name will go in the thing so uh, and then we'll pull it out and uh, if you donate once that's all you have to do is donate once um, and your name will go in there of course every month as we get cooler and better things we'll just keep adding more and more names in there I think uh, the very first thing that we're going to raffle away will probably be the others maybe so we'll let you know about that and it doesn't cost much for a raffle. You can just put in one dollar. That's one dollar that goes towards the Make-A-Wish Foundation. That's the best we could do. Our silent auction will be done this Thursday. And thank you to everybody that's been on that. That is completely painted and ready to go. I've been painting my butt off. But the most important thing is, is that we're raising money for things that matter. The Make-A-Wish Foundation. And, uh, Thank you so much for being a huge part of it, guys. Uh, I think that covers everything. We're going to be doing some more All Quiet on the Martian front. We've got some new stuff coming in that we are going to do, and a new scenario and new scenery, which I'm going to be doing a segment on how to build scenery um, and some other things. So we are going to up our game and make this channel the best place for you guys to come to feel welcome, to feel a part of, at no cost to you guys. You know, someday I may do a patron, but you know, right now, I think the most important thing is to help those people around us. And once I feel that we're in a good spot, then maybe, just maybe, we'll do something. Or then again, maybe we won't ever do anything. Well, that's it for this very, very long vlog, and I want to thank all of you for watching and letting me share my life with you each and every week uh, and just tell you stories canvas stories will be coming back to him so I'll paint and tell even more stories old guy has a lot of stories through life that's the way it works you, you, you get long in the tooth you get even longer stories and longer vlogs until next time I'm Rob Warren guys have a great week and we'll see you soon